Oh, no. Chris Beretta. Hello, my friend. How are you? Good. It's been too long. It sure has. Yeah. Our things in uh, Olympia, Washington. Well, Lacey. we're in Lacey. We're in Lacey. We want to make sure of that, right, guys? Yeah, we're in Lacey. <laughs> Olympia might be a funeral pyre right now. Too funny. How are you, my friend? Things good? Doing good. Um, so, you know, we have a wonderful class. And what was great was Chris actually reached out and wanted to talk to you guys. So I thought that was good that, you know, he'd want to uh, give you this time. Chris, tell us all about your uh, career at the Carolina Corps, but also prior to. Yes. Hi, guys. How are you? We having a good day? Yeah. Good, good. So I am good friends with Professor Kirby. Uh, we worked together um, on the collegiate side when, when Professor Kirby started um, uh, NACTA, uh, through NACTA, uh, a ticket-centered um, community of all of us, um, you know, administrators getting our heads together and collaborating. So that's where I met. Um, Troy was, you know, through our network and the collegiate side, but my career, um, I am originally from Federal Way. Um, I went to Decatur High School, go Gators. Um, I played soccer there, I played golf. Um, had a really great, um, you know, high school education there. Um, one state in soccer and got a college scholarship to a mid-major school called USC Upstate. That's a part of the Big South. Um, a school kind of, you know, similar in some ways, guys, to, to St. Martin's, um, you know, and graduated college, always wanted to get into sales and marketing. And I ended up... Um, landing a job in Tacoma, Washington, when you're driving on Interstate 5, right, um, after the Kingdom, if you're going from um, Lacey towards Seattle, if you look to the left, there's a company that says JL Darling right in the rain. My first job at a college was selling patented rain-resistant paper to the federal government, FEMA and the Department of Homeland Security. It's really a fascinating job that really cut my teeth in sales and marketing. Um, my dream was to get into sports. So I literally um, sent my resume out to, to all professional soccer teams at that time. This is before David Beckham coming to professional soccer. Um, I ended up having uh, a few offers uh, from Kansas City, New York, Dallas, Chicago, to name a few ready to board a plane to Chicago and Dallas came calling and reversed my trajectory and took a job at FC Dallas. I worked in ticket sales um, as my first job ever in pro soccer um, from 2006, 2007 through 2009. Ended up getting a call in 2008 by the Seattle Seahawks who were taking over and purchasing a professional soccer team all of the employees of Seahawks were going to help with this new franchise called MLS Soccer, which ended up becoming the Seattle Sounders. So I ended up moving my whole life in my 1998 Toyota Corolla to Seattle. And the whole goal was to really take some of the programs that I did at FC Dallas and, and helping the Sounders create programs and, and really create that ticket program to, to maximize attendance. I helped with the Seahawks and the Sounders um, my role with them was helping on the luxury suite side and premium side. Um, did that for six seasons. Um, loved every minute of it. But due to relationships in life, I ended up going to the Citadel. Um, my girlfriend at the time was getting her doctorate at MUSC. And for our relationship, I had to delve into that. So um, moved to Charleston, South Carolina. Um, worked for an FCS school called the Citadel. It was a military college. I had to shave every day. I had to make sure my hair was short. <laughs> it was crazy, but it was awesome. We took that program from archaic times to modern. I helped on the ticket side, the fundraising side, delved into marketing and helped as an assistant admin for soccer and a few other sports. That's where Professor Kirby and I really uh, got to know each other well. Um, the Citadel guys beat uh, the Gamecocks, which was amazing. That was kind of our claim to fame there um, and uh, enjoyed every moment of, of my time at the Citadel. Left there after three, three and a half years, 
ended up going to the University of North Texas, um, helping in ticketing. And at the time I was, I believe the first and only senior associate AD over ticketing and revenue. So I helped um, not only on the ticket side, but also the marketing um, in, in programs and really took you know a hold of that. We had all time records for um, attendance in my time at University of North Texas. Was there again, three or four seasons. Um, got a call to work in professional soccer thereafter um, for the Greenville Triumph. Um, I went to college in South Carolina, so I decided to, to take the plunge and it was a really cool growth opportunity for me. Um, in Dallas, I had an opportunity of selling sponsorships, but in Greenville, it was awesome because I was able to sell sponsorships, oversee merchandise, oversee really all the external units. Um, and we really, you know, took the business to new heights. Um, sponsorship wise, I kind of led by example. Um, I had two other folks selling for us externally. I managed between eight and 10 people at the time. Uh, and we, we did great things, um, you know, from awards internally and externally and sold stadiums out. Um, at the time we had the largest kit sponsorship on the front of the Jersey. Um, and that partner is still to this day, a partner of, of the Greenville Triumph and part of the USL ecosystem. Um, I ended up leaving Greenville in 2022 and I took on my role now with Carolina Core. We're a professional soccer team in central North Carolina. There's no other professional soccer team. So it's, it's great for us to be a differentiator, but I took this job because it's pro soccer. And then guys were the first non MLS team in our country to make youth make youth soccer free. So I'm fundraising um, on a daily basis to make it completely free for our two youth soccer teams. We're going to grow it from two to four. And then we're also bringing young ladies to the fold as well. So, you know, for my career started in tickets, and then now really kind of managing the external units as a whole. But um, my best advice for you guys is to bring passion to what you do. If you love what you do, it's like you never worked a day in your life. And what's so great about what we do here with Carolina before and really all the, the positions I've had all over the country um, is when you, when you, when you really, you know, jump into it, do you want to be getting into insurance? <laughs> do you want to get into sports? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a lifestyle. Um, it's really, you know, a Monday through Sunday job with game days and non game days going to a viewing party or whatever it could be. But, uh, I love what I do. Um, played college soccer. I played pro indoor after in Tacoma, Washington, out of the soccer center with the Tacoma stars. Um, there's been some cool highlights. Sometimes you never win an NFL title or a major league soccer title or beat a FBS program like we did with the Gamecocks when I was at the Citadel but um, you know some of the memories I have winning the Super Bowl going to New York in the blizzard um, but most importantly in my career I get the most thrill and excitement when staff members and interns get full-time jobs so my best advice is pour into you know and, and tell Professor Kirby you want to help the St. Martin's Athletics Department on ticket sales or sports information or marketing and help them. Um, there are great division one and division two schools. There's also great pro teams. There's a triple A baseball team, a hop, skip and a joke jump in Tacoma. Um, there's the WNBA team that does amazing things in Seattle. There's the NHL Kraken, there's Seahawks and Sounders. Um, there's so much opportunity for you guys if you want to get into, um, you know, professional sports, but that's kind of the scope of me. Uh, Troy, I'll throw it back to you. Okay, well, Malachi, one of our students, has a question. Malachi, what's your question? So what would you say would be your best, most beneficial networking experience that you've had? Oh, gosh. Um, so I'm working at FC Dallas at the time. We have a, a summit, a Major League Soccer Summit. This is in 2008, guys. This is in Q3, Q4 of, of 2008. The Seahawks bring all of their staff to this event. I wasn't shy. I shook their hand. Um, I told them I'd love to take a tour of the Virginia Mason Athletic Center when I come back to town to see my family. It was a blizzard in Seattle. This is in the winter of 2008. My parents drove me from Gig Harbor, Washington, Gig Harbor, all the way to Renton to take a tour. 
I took a tour in my manila folder. I handed it at the end of the tour to the gentleman named Casey Shaw at the time, who was the decision maker. He kept my resume hard, hard copy and the manila folder. When the opportunity came for one of the stud sales guys to move out of country, I was his first call. So there's a difference between between being too forthright and crazy when I get 10 or 20 emails from the same person about a sales position or a position in general, and there's a concise, classy way to do things. So that is what really kind of got me my job with Seahawk Sounders was that, look, I'd love to take a tour. And honestly, I can't drive in the snow. So my dad's sacrificing in the Honda CRV, driving me all the way down to Retton. But when I met with Chuck Arnold, who was the VP of sales and marketing, who's now the CEO of First and Goal and the Seahawks or whomever, I made a good first impression. I looked him in their eye. I gave him a firm handshake. I sent a thank you note after about just the time. And they beat Brett Favre that year. It was one of his last years in NFL. Those little touches, classy touches go a long way. When you, But yeah. Well, Brady has a question. Brady, what's your question? Um, with working so much, how do you stay motivated to keep giving your best effort in your line of work? Look, at the end of the day, the reason why I've, I've been very blessed having great teams around me to go from team to team, people want game breakers. People want folks to move the needle forward in revenue, breaking records and doing things the right way in a passionate standpoint, right? Um, so what motivates me? Um, honestly, everybody's different, guys. The fear of failure has always you know, led me well. Um, and honestly, I care. And I think it, it, you know, it, the staff that we have, I think feel that, that I genuinely care about the brand and caring about breaking records. And then with our staff pushing them to new heights and making sure that there's transparency and accountability. Um, something I learned through major league soccer guys, um, that's important if you're going to buy a house in Lacey or Olympia or Gig Harbor or Fetter Way down the line, or you're buying a car from, you know, BMW or wherever it may be in, in the South Sound is the six steps in the selling process. Okay. What is the six steps in the selling process by major league soccer created this system that I've really shared in every step I've gone from Seahawks and Sounders all the way to current day with Carolina core. We're part of the MLS ecosystem guys and next pro. So we're really the Cheney um, in, in, in Tacoma. We're really the Tacoma Rainiers of soccer um, just as an FYI from a scope. Six steps in the selling process. Number one is build rapport. Number two is set the agenda. Number three is ask open-ended questions. Number four is product knowledge. Number five is create urgency. And number six is ask for the sale. This doesn't matter if it's ticketing or sponsorship. In ticketing, sometimes the cycle goes a little quicker, right? Sometimes it doesn't. You're going to learn in sales when to press the envelope and when not to. I have a publicly traded company that I'm in negotiations with right now about a significant multi-million dollar sponsorship of my pro soccer team. They have told me, Chris, you're going to be earmarked in 2025. We're trying to figure out things internally. What's my job between now and them saying yes? Build a quality, genuine relationship. Show that it's not transactional. And get the hay in the barn when the time's right. Too many salespeople force product down throats instead of being genuine and getting to know your buyer. That's what separated me in the Seattle market was just getting to know folks, care, caring about it. I'll never forget. A lady wanted to take a home equity line of credit to buy her Seahawks and Sounder season tickets. For my renewal goal, I needed to get it. For my heart, it was like family feud saying no. So I told her, it probably doesn't look best you know you know just based on budgets and everything to buy season tickets this year with Seahawks and Sounders I tell you what get everything in order I'm going to help you on the single game level don't you worry and I'll always do my best to get those tickets back when things financially get better for you Salespeople sometimes look really poor 
with like a used car sales mentality. I think it's helped me to have a genuine heart and a care for others and wanting to get to know them and their families and their daughter plays soccer at Washington Premier from Tacoma. She's 10 years old. Her favorite player is Steve Zakawani, a fast winger that was drafted number one by the Sounders in 2009. Her new favorite player is Jordan Morris who played at Stanford. All that little stuff matters. All that gets placed in this thing, guys, called CRM. The Seahawks and the Sounders were the first team through Paul Allen, God rest his soul, to do a huge customized customer relationship management tool through Microsoft Dynamics. Microsoft Dynamics and Salesforce are the big behemoth beast in customer relationship management. But when you're getting to know a client, all that information lives there. Chris's birthday is on July 28th of 1982. Every July 28th, 1982, there's a custom happy birthday note from my account rep that sends it to me. How cool is this that my ticket rep has given me a customized note? This isn't just for tickets, but it's also for sponsorships too. But I'm, I delved in and, and kind of <laughs> elaborated maybe too long on your question. Austin, what's your question? Uh, so I was wondering if you can share any lessons that you've learned or any pivotal moments that kind of shaped your career journey. Yeah. Gosh, um, no one's perfect. Everyone um, does their best to move the ball forward. When you make a mistake, learning from the mistake. One of our sponsors, he's on a $1.95 million 10-year sponsorship with us. His company has a rule owning it. His company change names. I sent him an email having the incorrect name on it. Chris, what the heck? You don't even know the name of my company? I owned it to him. I said, Chase, I'm really apologetic. Um, I typed that in wrong. Not going to happen again. 1.95 million in, 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 in minor league sports, guys, is big. It's not quite like the $7 million deal the Sounders are getting from Providence right now, but it's still notable, okay? So owning it. When you make a mistake, owning it, learning from it, and moving forward. As long as you're moving forward, not making the same mistake, I think it puts you in a good place. So right now, I get between 20 and 50 emails from folks wanting to work in merchandise, tickets, marketing, all these external units for us. Okay. What is a separator for a novice or an entry-level full-time person or an intern? Separations in the preparation, Russell Wilson. When I worked for the Seahawks, why was it that Russell was in there at 6.30 a.m.? Why was it that Russell didn't leave until 6 or 7 p.m.? A complete difference maker. I never seen any quarterback. Matt Hasselbeck didn't do that. Why did Pete Carroll sleep in the office every day? He wanted to find if there's game film, if there's something that's a change maker. So in our business setting, what's the change maker? I have a list of five or 10 projects that I want to complete for the day. Sometimes there's a code red and a fire to pull, pull out. Then I go back in and I make sure that those five or 10 elements are completed each day. But back to it, separations in the preparation. If you're meant to be on a Zoom call at 10 a.m., you're going to get on there at 9.50. You're arriving to uh, Professor Kirby's class five, 10 minutes early. You're preparing for his readings prior. All that goes into your professional career. I want someone that's going to be early. I want someone that's going to be thorough and prepares for a meeting. Another thing that's really important, guys, is making sure that you bring a notebook into every single one of your meetings. But keep going. What, what else you guys have? Well, first of all, amen. That's why we always have tangible assignments that if they bring to an employer, will actually show what they can do. Maddie, you have a question. <laughs> Uh, in your experience, what has attracted you to the teams you've been a part of? Gosh. Uh, growth, opportunity of, you know, um, you know, managing more folks or the vision of ownership or being able to truly make a difference. Um, I'm kind of unique where I've worked on the collegiate side, FBS, FCS. FBS means that they have football guys. FCS is like St. Martin's. I believe there's no football. Um, and then, you know, professionally major and minor league. Um, 
all, all my teams have been blessings. You know, I, I, I now have a wife and two children for uh, up until my late thirties. It was just me and, and my golden doodle, David Beckham. So all, all, you know, it's, it's the two of us have gone all over the country. Um, I've been able to accumulate houses. Um, <laughs> so every place I've been, I've kept the house, which has proved nice. Um, but look, every opportunity, you know, great leadership, um, great ownership have, have definitely set the path um, and, and excitement. Well, fantastic. Um, Kayla, what's your question? Um, what is something unique about the soccer industry from a selling standpoint? Soccer? Yes. Okay. Gosh, soccer's 90 minutes. Soccer's in and out. It's not going to be a four or five hour baseball match. Um, the engagement, smoke bombs, um, drums, uh, unique experiences, I think, are a differentiator between soccer and baseball specifically. I think there's a lot of pageantry in college football that there's some similarities between that and soccer. Um, NFL is just a beast on, on its own, right? Um, from a revenue perspective and all the stop starts with commercials and all that. Um, but I'm drawn into soccer. My dad guys played for the Canadian national team. He played in the Tacoma stars in the early eighties was the first starting goalie there. Um, my dad was a longtime coach at stadium high school. He once stayed there. Um, so that my love of soccer really started as an infant on my mom's lap, eating dots and watching my dad play. Um, my dad played for Tacoma Stars, Cleveland, Toronto, Buffalo, LA, and Edmonton. So we kind of navigated everywhere in his professional soccer career. Um, that's why I love the game and, and all that. Fantastic. Our new Dynamo, uh, Jocelyn, what's your question? Um, what's your advice to someone who's like coming out of college that aspires to work in the sports industry? Yeah. Um, you know, your first few years out of college to be laser focused on being a success and the best version of yourself, um, not be focused on the money. Uh, a young lady that interned for me at the Citadel has won two Stanley Cups with the Tampa Bay Lightning. She has $60,000 worth of rings. She does it because she loves hockey and her and her brothers played hockey growing up in the Northeast. So, my biggest advice is do what you're passionate about and set yourself apart. You set yourself apart um, by somewhat, you know, urgency. Um, set yourself apart with saying what you what you're gonna do, um, and a care and a passion. I think is really important. Um, you know, Professor Kirby has phenomenal contacts. You guys are very blessed. All over the country um, are his contacts. And everybody that you're, you know, coming into the fold on from, you know, the gal in the WNBA from the Liberty and other folks within the sphere, you guys are going to be able to tap into them. Um, if that's me and others, send us a note. Hey, thanks so much for, you know, being a part of the class. Hey, can you help me? I'm going to get a job with, I don't know, um, you know, the pro soccer team in Spokane. I'm from Spokane. They apparently have a brand new state-of-the-art stadium that uh, there's professional women's soccer, men's soccer. Gosh, you know, I can help you guys with that. Um, you know, not don't be afraid of, of the network and where you want to go, um, but you got to set yourself apart. Too many young people are stone set and saying, I need to make 50,000. I need to make 60,000. Guys, when I worked for the Seahawks, I made $9 an hour. $9 an hour. Why did I take the job? Because I gosh dang worked for the Seattle Seahawks and Sounders. And if I wanted to do a phenomenal job, then I kind of had to sell a little bit. And guess what? I ended up, you know, I'm grateful for the time in Seattle. I ended up, you know, um, I arrived guys in April of 2009. All my colleagues sold all the suites, sold all the season tickets, had all the relationships. Within 18 months, I was the number one salesperson for the next five or five years, all because of the relationships and calling on the Wembley soccer shop from Lacey Olympia area. Yeah, Olympia. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. Called through, you know, a relentless pursuit on what my colleagues weren't doing. My colleagues weren't coming in on Saturday. 
I'd go to the cafeteria and have breakfast and lunch, pound out 50 to 100 calls, send a bunch of emails, right? What are you going to do that separates yourself? Everybody wants to make 50, 60, 70,000. What are you going to do that's going to be different, right? So that's what I challenge all you guys to do is to do what the rest won't do. You know, it's right now with my role, sometimes a general, um, what, what's a, uh, uh, a, a COO or a CFO sends out um, the, the corporate sponsorship um, invoices through QuickBooks, okay? Guess who's doing that right now? Me. I've never done that before in my career. But guess what? I'm learning. It's different. You got to make sure when you send out financials and invoices that things are done right. And I get, guess what? It's, it's awesome. I'm learning a different side of the business. And sometimes I can't send it out between noon and four. But maybe I'm sending it out between four and 8 p.m. just to make sure it gets out. So there's so many things when you start in your career. Ticket sales is the gateway to so many other roles. If you do a phenomenal job in tickets, maybe you delve into marketing. Maybe you delve into community um, relations and community partnerships. There's a young lady, guys, that now works for the Sounders. She started as like an account rep on customer service. She now oversees all the events for the Sounders' new $100 million facility in um, Auburn, Kent area, I believe it is. Um, that's now named, you know, Swedish Providence Performance Center. And she evolved within the organization. She's been there 15 years and she did such a great job that she continued to have opportunity. So hopefully that answers your question. Well, we've got Toko who is a visiting student from Japan. Toko, what is your question? What experiences have led you to your current job? So what experiences have led you to your current job? Gosh. Okay, um, experiences, uh, ticket sales, marketing, overseeing all the external departments um, have kind of led from, you know, my first job, guys, was 2006, and now I'm kind of the Wiley veteran. <laughs> um, so, you know, all those external units um, has kind of led me to where I'm at now with, with Carolina Core. Um, since you're from Japan, my favorite soccer player that played for Fiorentina in um, the Serie A in Italy played for the Japan national team, Nakata. Do you remember him? Uh, she says no. <laughs> there you go. Hayden, what's your question? So how have you been able to kind of manage and balance your work life and personal life, especially with moving to so many different sports teams and colleges? Yeah. If my wife was on this call, um, she would have her own opinion. Um, to make a long story short, um, I have two houses, one in Charlotte and one house in High Point. It's 87 miles each way. I take the train or I drive on Sunday. I'm here Monday through Friday, and I take the train or I drive back to Charlotte to spend it with my family. My family will be here in High Point all summer long, but there's sacrifices to be made. If I travel the 87 miles or from Olympia to Renton every day, it may be difficult, right? Um, but through all the sacrifices, my wife knows I'm passionate about our project. My company is taking really good care of me and there's some amazing people. I came here to answer your question. Our owner's family founded Old Dominion Freightline publicly traded company. They make a big difference. You probably see them on ESPN game day. That's the family. They want to leave a legacy here in central North Carolina to the platform of soccer. Um, so I've had to make a lot of sacrifices. I've had to, you know, in when I left Dallas to go to Seattle, I signed a new 12 month lease on my apartment. I had to pay the apartment out nine months of not living there and I couldn't sublet it. You know how difficult that was to write a check of $12,000 of money that I didn't really have. But guess what? My mama said, you know what? Come up here. It's God's will that you should take this job. That's what you feel in your heart. I took it. And guess what? I took the job. I lived with her in Gig Harbor for six months. I saved money and then got my little uh, apartment, <laughs> mother-in-law suite in Green Lake outside of Seattle. 
And then I lived there for the rest of my five years. So sacrifices are made every day for you to take a job in sports. Once you build experience, the CEO, president of FC, uh, of my team, Carolina Corps, was my first boss, guys, in 2006, 2007, all the way to 2009. When I got my job in Seattle, he hugged me. He said, thank you for all your sacrifices and making things happen. In Dallas, I drove eight and a half hours to Borger, Texas, to the ConocoPhillips refinery to do a ten to $15,000 ticket deal. Dribble pass and score is kind of like pump pass and kick for soccer. I did that. I drove back and worked the game. I didn't do that for the commission. I did that for us to hit our annual goal for our department. So there's, he never forgot that. My boss, he, he always, you know, we always joke about it, but he remembers those things, those isms of Chris that hopefully I can you know, show to the staff, to our entry level ticket sales folks or the sponsorship fulfillment um, colleagues that I have or the merchandise manager, whomever it is, um, those little isms stay with you for 15 years and people don't forget it. He's called me when I worked in Seattle to go and do a, a, a pro soccer project in, in uh, Canada. I didn't take it because I just started my job in Seattle, but I stayed in good touch. And then this opportunity was brewing for a year or two. We're going to have a beautiful training facility similar to the Sounders, 12,000 square feet, first of its kind of minor league soccer. And then our stadium's a $50 million stadium, which is kind of unheard of in minor league soccer. So I think you guys asked me that question. That's the difference maker of why the heck I'm here and not in South Carolina. Ethan, what's your question? Yeah, what's the... What is the hardest position you had to work in your career? <clears throat> the what? Hardest position you had to work in the, your career. Gosh. The hardest position. Yeah. How about going back to uh, wonderful North Texas, where you had uh, Ren Baker and you had my buddy uh, Ryan Peck who threw out you every day, and they were not just people in athletics, but they put on pro wrestling if they had to to get people there. You got it. Um, honestly, I mean, Professor Kirby brings up a really good point. When I was at the University of North Texas, um, there was a lot of pressure. There was pressure from the president. There was pressure from our AD, pressure from, you know, felt by me and Ryan to really make a difference. So, Gosh, I, I would say University of North Texas is up there. And I would say, you know, the pressure that I feel here, um, some of it is internal. And guys, in, in order to make things happen, when you're a revenue generator, you gotta prove you gotta prove that the bacon, the hay is in the barn, right? Um, so when you have a willingness by executives and ownership or senior leaders and admin, like uh, Professor Kirby brought up, University of North Texas, we're the first. FBS football school to have a standalone wrestle professional wrestling match in tandem with the FBS football game. University of North Texas played Southern Methodist University and we broke records. We probably had an additional 1500 to 1900 buyers that would never have gone to a, a college football game that bought just because of the wrestling match. So you it's fun to try things, but holy cow, you better deliver. And we delivered on that. Um, and then the pressure I feel here, you know, we manage a pretty big group and we're launching something um, for the first time ever um, with, with our pro soccer team here. Our inaugural match is June 1st. So I definitely challenge you guys to go to carolinacorefc.com, you know, you know, sift around in terms of the leadership. Guys, we're the first team in pro soccer to have a all Latino African-American technical staff. Never been done before. This is something that should have been done decades ago. Eddie Pope, the best defender in the last hundred years. Roy Lassiter had the scoring title of Major League Soccer. Both those guys are leading the charge. Megan Oglesby, our owner, the second female owner in the history of North American pro soccer. Those two are the whys when I go into a sponsor and I go into speaking to folks. That's our separators in the marketplace, and it's going well. Marcel, what's your question? 
What would you say is the one of the biggest challenges that you've had to overcome in your career, and uh, how did you get through it and stay successful? Uh, challenges. Um, I would say the most difficult challenge is at FC Dallas, calling people, trying to get them to come to pro soccer games and them calling um, soccer names and derogatory comments or calling people that play soccer derogatory comments. I think Messi has brought a light to soccer and a positivity. Um, but I think that was kind of an eye opener. And for all the ob objections that I would get with soccer, it would fuel my fire that guy would say something when I would call um, Corsicana, this this really rural place and names are being hurled at me because I work at the soccer team. And I'm like, you don't have a daughter. You don't have a granddaughter. You don't have a niece that plays soccer, the fastest growing sport in the country. It's not about soccer. It's about an experience. It's about, you know, community. So that's our kind of separators. I would say that was the most difficult challenge. Um, the state of Texas is um, a very unique place. Amazing college pro football is everything. Soccer is not so much. I'm happy to say when I was in Dallas, those records that we had have never been broken. Um, and that's 10, 15 years later. So that's the power of relationships. Why is it that the Sounders averaged 45,000 when I was there? Why did the Sounders average low 30s now? Maybe some of it has to do with the Kraken, minimally. Majority of their season tickets, are, you know, it's only 17, 20,000 people in the arena. You know why they have only low 30s and not 45,000 like we have? All relationships. All of the folks that were there six, eight, 10 years are not there anymore. Maybe because they didn't value the ticket sales team. Maybe they didn't value the SVP of partnerships. So, you know, the power of relationships go a long way, guys. Even through the transition of life, you got to take care of your team. Why is it that the Seahawks, all of their staff has been there 15, 20, 30 years? 30 years, all my colleagues, because they have the algorithm of taking care of their staff. Maybe it's not in compensation, guys. Maybe it's um, my, my too much information, but my wife and I had difficulty um, conceiving. We had to go and do IVF. It cost me $20,000. You work for the Seahawks, zero bucks. Maybe it's because of the healthcare aspects. Maybe it's because of the value aspect where your boss gives you, you know, a high five and a hug and says, you know what, you're doing a great job. Here's your gift over the holidays. And it's a jacket that you're going to give to your grandpa. And that means the world. The value of being felt and recognized goes a long way. So all those amazing folks that I worked for, for the Seahawks that are still there, I try to take all those isms of Chris Lawrence, the VP of marketing, Chuck Arnold, and I've tried to delve that into myself, Ryan Peck, um, you know, Professor Kirby brings him up a lot. Um, and he's a great man that's now at Texas Christian University and oversees the external unit there. Um, so hopefully that I got time for one more question, if that's okay. Dragon, what's your question? So when you're pursuing these big opportunities and sponsorships, the likes of which maybe your club hasn't had before, what would be the biggest key to securing those as opposed to all the other people who are also pursuing them? Yeah, I've, I've separated ourselves. I use AI right now through lead generation. Majority of teams aren't doing that on the minor league side. So we're using AI. We're using the power of, um, you know, getting out there on networking events. Um, a majority of our sponsors are local, regional, national. I'm making an announcement on Friday. Don't repeat this until the announcement, but our official wealth management partner is going to be CIBC Bank out of Canada. Um, CIBC Bank is the signature partner for the Canadian national team, and we have secured a multi-year contract at an exclusive category because of the differentiators. They wanted to be a part of us because we're making you soccer free, first of its kind by a non MLS team. Um, and, you know, just being unique and maximizing opportunities. I'll send Professor, Professor Kirby an article from the Sports Business Journal about Carolina Corps that I think will be a unique lens. We're the first independent team to sell out all the jersey. Um, you know, inventory, I've sold front, sleeve, upper back, and shorts, all on multi-year terms. 
Um, so that separator of technical staff, first of its kind, Megan being the second female owner, three, our training facility being kind of unique. Those are all the separators and passion. I want people to come across Carolina Corps and me and our staff and feel that passion. Too many people are out there. I'll never hire a young person again that doesn't have passion in what they're doing. Yes, they may have a different personality in me. That's great because that's what makes a team special. But you have to have passion. I made a hire in a, in a team um, 120 miles away. And guess what? The sponsorship guy, no passion. Should never have made that hire ever. And now all these years later, he still has the same issues and he's struggling. Passion goes a long way. What is that? What is that? Why you have to ask yourself if you're at a sports team, if you're selling insurance, if you're doing whatever it is, what's the why I have you guys for another five. Um, Troy, anything else? You know, the one thing that I'd like to talk about is uh, you mentioned NACA. You mentioned going to conferences. Uh, when I'm trying to encourage them to go to conferences or network, how big is uh, that just for those little things that you're not throwing a resume in front of people, but you're actually meeting them on their terms? Yeah. I mean, guys, that's how I got my um, – I'll elaborate on this for the next five minutes. I, on my own dime, flew on Delta from Seattle to Baltimore, okay? I went to the convention, the National Soccer Coaches Association of America, and through um, Troy, what's it called? The the um, the search engine to find a sports job. You know, uh, Buffy's there. Teamwork online. Uh, so teamwork through teamwork. I sent my resume. I got accepted to this NSCAA deal. I ended up meeting ten or fifteen executives from LA Galaxy to every dog on team. That's where you shake the hand. You talk about the role that you want. I had a little bit of an advantage because I helped in, um, you know, with FEMA and Department of Homeland Security. I sold to folks that were a little bit older than me, had that experience, but didn't have the soccer. So I transitioned not as a junior account rep. I was able to transition into more um, corporate, corporate sales, corporate tickets, corporate sponsorships in Dallas. Um, so you got to sell yourself. If, if you're not going to sell yourself, who's going to sell you, right? Um, do it honorably with passion, um, authenticity. But yeah, those events, guys, um, on Teamwork Online, look, I mean, we did it with Seahawks and Sounders. I put on a Teamwork event to 200 local uh, UW, Wazoo, Western. Don't think I had anybody from y'all school at that time, but I would suggest go and shake the hands. Know who, by the photos on the website, who Chris Lawrence is of the Seahawks, of Lindsey Walker from the Seahawks. What is their photo? What do they look like? So you know who the heck you're about to shake the hand of. Those are the two decision makers with the Seahawks are signing and hiring salespeople and service people. You need to look at Mike Nair and Amy Sprangers, the chief revenue officer of the Seahawks. What does their photo look like if you want to get into sponsorships? What, what happens if you want to get into merchandise? So you can do a lot of that homework on LinkedIn, but when you're reaching out to people um, on LinkedIn, I definitely suggest being very poignant and simple and not too long. Um, and how do you hook me? You hook me by, you know, I have a young man right now that through the military is doing an internship with me. It's zero dollars and he's phenomenal. And I need to do everything possible when he graduates this internship program to get him a full-time job. Maybe it's not in sales. Maybe it's the game day, game day manager. He is buttoned up. He cares. He's moving at an expedient pace. Um, graphic artist. Anybody a graphic artist in here? No. No. Um, I digress, but I got... <laughs> Well, great stuff. Uh, Chris, thank you very much for coming on. We appreciate it. We're going to go, but uh, have a good day. Hey, thanks, guys. Bye.